This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer at Lowe's with Memorial Day savings on major appliances like the Smart Whirlpool Top Load Washer featuring the two-in-one removable agitator and a color you'll only find at Lowe's. Take it out for bulky items, leave it in for a more thorough clean. You can customize any load, plus skip steps with the load-and-go dispenser. Simply add detergent once and skip the refills. Memorial Day savings start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, uh, this next story, I'm afraid, my data, Steve. For sure. And honestly, when I first saw this, I'm like, no one's going to give a crap. But then you hear the story, and you're like, it's actually a pretty fascinating story. And I would say that people your age and my age definitely would care, and maybe Rev, too. But I, uh, Danny, Vicky, my kids, I don't know. Uh, I sad. wonder, though, I feel like maybe this movie is a movie that transcends just our age range, because it's just such a fun movie. What's well, movie? it is a fun movie. I believe if, if Vicky knows this movie. Dallas. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Whoa. love that movie. Yeah, yeah. good. If that's Vicky good. knows this movie, it's because her dad watched it with her. I'm that. That's my prediction. Uh, the movie is City Slickers. Oh, you guys remember that? No, I love that movie. How do you know that movie? Billy Crystal and Daniel Stern. Okay. okay. Yeah. How do you not uh, watch yeah, that Daniel movie? Stern. I grew right. up on that movie. Like, that was always on. I feel like it, it should have probably aired a lot on television. Because it, okay. like, it was like, you know what I mean? It's like one of those yeah. movies that I think you could put on network television and it could air in like the middle of a Saturday afternoon. That and like Three Amigos. Yeah. yeah. I feel like those two movies kind of, I don't know why, but they were around that same time frame, similar style of humor. And I think that they did have, they, they stood the test of time at least for a few years after the movie came out. Agreed. All right. Well, I'm very happy to nice. hear that Danny knows this. Vicky doesn't. <laughs> Vicky, you said. failure. Go yeah. home. <laughs> All right, that's that's what I, no, stay here. That's the punishment. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah, your father really let you down, Vicky. Oh. I think you'd awesome. like City Slickers. Yeah. It seems like a lot of those movies, like you were saying, The Three Amigos, and what was his name? Like Martin, Martin Short. Short. Yeah. Yeah, Martin Steve Short. Martin too, he, yeah. Was, he was in a lot of movies that I watched back in the day, so I definitely probably won't dislike it. I'm curious to see if it holds up, though. Now, City Slickers, too. We don't need to talk about that. There's a second. But it was the quest for Curly's Gold. I know. I, d- I didn't <laughs> want to say know that one either, actually, which is yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, there's a reason why you don't know that. I was uh, pumped when it came out with a sequel, and I was like, why? It was like one of my first moments where I got let down by a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Curly, of course, uh, that the actor Jack Palance, who played Curly, uh, ended up winning an Oscar for that. He wasn't the first choice. There was somebody else they approached before him. Jeez, and you know, course, I, I didn't even realize that anyone won an Academy Award for that movie. Like That kind of blows my mind, because I don't feel that as like an Academy Award movie. Oh, you don't remember that moment where he did push-ups? I think it was during the Academy that. Awards, yeah. I did not realize it was because of that. Yeah. I mean, he wanted to show everybody, hey, even though I'm an old guy, I can still make it happen. It was quite iconic. No, you're right. That's right. He did the push-ups. And uh turns out, though, Jack was not the dude they wanted. They wanted Charles Bronson. But Charles was like, no, I am not doing this movie. And here's Billy Crystal telling why. Jack, at the time, wasn't sure he could do the part. He had a conflict with this other movie that he didn't think he could get out of. So we were going to start shooting. So we got a call from uh, Mr. Bronson's agent that he was available and give him a call. So we sent him the script. And I said, he's going to call you exactly at 12 o'clock. Mr. Bronson, on your private line. So I picked it up. I go, hello, Mr. Bronson. He cursed me out. I'm dead on page 53. How could you do this? 
Nobody kills Charles Bronson. Didn't you see my the Death Wish movies? I don't die. <laughs> I said, well, that's the key part of the story. F you, I'm dead. Hangs up. Maybe a few minutes later, we get a call from Jack saying he worked it out, he's in, and we were able to do the film. Wow. wow. I mean, th- th- oh if that's gosh. exactly how that went down. It was a Billy Joel moment for poor Billy Crystal. Uh, he was just told to F off. F you, kid. I've always, like, as a kid, thought Charles Bronson was, like, cool. Man, he's even cooler than I thought. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't die in movies, click. Right? Like, this guy just, he is not about it. How yeah. dare you kill me off? That's awesome. I don't even know who Charles Bronson is. Oh. I was thinking uh, so the bad. Death Wish movies, they're, like, from the 70s and... Yeah. And 80s. Well, were they, did they make it to the 80s? Yeah, I, I just correctly. remember seeing them on TV all the time. There was, like, one of the ones that, that had, like, the music of Guns N' Roses, I think, in it, if I remember correctly. I, I know wow, had, that had to be one of the later ones. It was one of the later ones, but it was, and it was awesome. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if any of those death wishes beyond one and two were that good, to be honest with you, but uh, I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that, Steve. I can't think of anything else Charles Bronson's done. He was in The Magnificent Seven, the original okay. one. Oh, That's nice. Cool. Yeah, that was a good one. The Great yeah, Escape. Did. I don't know. All right. So he, he was a guy. He did a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Death Wish is what he's known for. But yeah, he was a badass. He just was a badass. And I, I can understand his brand. It's like, yeah, you don't kill me. I, I, I outlast everybody. I get it. Absolutely. Yeah. But how about he believes his own, like his character so much that he's like, I am not even, I don't care what the payday is. And oh, I mean, maybe he watched, you know, Jack Palance win an Academy Award. He's like, damn it, that could have been me. And he's yeah, like, I no, wonder. You know what? I didn't die. That's more important. I'd rather I think, yeah. not die than get an Academy Award. I think that's something along his lines with that. Yeah, and I think he's dead now, right? Yeah. So eventually, yeah. it happened. Two thousand three. Eventually, it happened, but not yeah. on film. Yeah, but not in the movies. Bj, <laughs> that's what I would have. That would have been my answer to him. Go, yeah. Y- you know what? You are going to die. Uh, just so you know. Uh, so why not? You know, Damn. why not do another movie Jeez. role before that happens? <laughs> Dark. Well, he told he told Billy Crystal to go f off. I mean, at this point, I'm not having a cordial conversation with Charles Bronson if he's treating me the way he treated Billy. What Crystal. kind of day was he having? Where he's like, you know, what? screw right? you, Billy Crystal. Click. Yeah. I mean, you never know. Did he not like Billy Crystal and didn't even like the new, you know, that because that was the new wave of entertainer, Billy and those guys. And maybe young Charles kid. is way old school. Yeah. You know, it's just like, hey, these young, stupid kids with the way they do stuff. And City Slickers doesn't have a radio tie to wasn't oh. his job. Wasn't his job. He was like a salesperson and he was like unhappy with his life. And that's why he goes on the whole thing. I and know he, he was a salesperson. I didn't know it was radio. I think it's not. radio because he talks. Yeah. yeah. He goes to his kid's school and the kid is like, well, they're like, what do you do? And he's oh. like, I work in radio. And they're like, you're on the air. And he's like, no, I sell. Oh, that's ad right. Time. A middle age, big city radio ad salesman. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, Oh, wow. How funny. I forgot even that part. I think I watched it like later on when I got into radio and I was like, yeah. I oh, mean, that's I really would cool. be pretty depressed too if I was there. Ooh, a nice correction from one of the texters said Guns N' Roses, they were in a Clint Eastwood movie called The Deadpool, not in the Charles Bronson movie, Ding Dong. Oh. Why well, yeah. you could just oh, correct right, ding me. Dong. Call me a ding dong. <laughs> uh, well, again, that was Charles Bronson correcting you. That's yeah. a good point. My, my bad, Charles. I didn't, don't hang up on me. Yeah. That, that was a good movie too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do Chris Farley. Well, I'm I, done talking to you. Okay, here's my problem. I would always confuse Charles Bronson and Clint Eastwood movies. Not the actor. I know that they're completely mm-hmm. different looking, but I felt like they they had they were on like that same trajectory of like the style of movies that they were doing. I guess it makes sense. They're, they're probably badasses. They were in spaghetti westerns, I gather. I mean, yeah. they did a lot of westerns and then of course, you know, badass cops. I don't know if I don't know if Charles Bronson was a cop, in, but they were surely like guys in contemporary settings shooting a lot of people and living. Yeah, they were like old, older, not old guys, but they were older, especially when you're a kid. I remember uh, Jeff Goldblum played a, played a real bad guy uh, before we even knew who Jeff Goldblum was. He did a very nasty thing, I think. I think it's what he said, uh, you know, he, that set off Charles Bronson and being the crazy guy. Charles Bronson was John Wick of today. I would say that's really... Oh, totally, yeah. Death, oh. Death Wish is John Wick is really mm-hmm. what it is, yeah. Except instead of the dog, it was Charles's family, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Like either his wife and kid, or at least his wife. Anyway. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, there oh, you go. Deadpool is also the movie that gave us that great uh, phrase from Clint Eastwood that his uh, opinions are like blank holes. Everyone has one. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that came from from uh, Clint in that movie. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Ah, Clint had some good lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. Movie. I want to go back and watch that one. Go check okay, it out. There I hope you it go. holds up for you. See if it holds up. Yeah, I remember yeah. I was stoked because Guns N' Roses music was on it. Like those are the dumb reasons why I like things.
Well, Let's I get see. it. I mean, you know, if you like a band and they're in the movie, sure. I mean, you're going to like it. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what, that's kind of what they hope for with some of the movies. Like, hey, let's get that stupid Steve kid to watch our movie. Right. Throw Guns and Roses, Guns and Roses in there. We'll put their song in there. He'll watch this. We got a guy that was let go from his job because he was spotted at a bar after taking a sick day. But how about a judge ruled he should not have been fired? I'll tell you why at 819 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melting craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 3 3 through 5 18 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So right before the pandemic hit last March, a 66-year-old guy in England named Colin called in sick to work. Then got caught hanging out at a bar. Well, that's the best way to cure a sickness is yeah. Jägermeister. Isn't that what that was used for originally? Yeah, yeah to- totally. Yeah. Well, you know what? you got to come up with some excuse, Steve. He needs a lawyer. He needed somebody like you. A uh, company fired him. They were like, that's it. You're done. Damn. And uh, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, if you're a boss and you're someone called in sick and it screws up the day, and then all of a sudden you see like a post like on social media or something like that, and they're like doing shots or drinking at a bar, it probably would piss you off. Yeah, this dude's apparently a heavy smoker. He has a lung condition, and so when his boss called him on a Monday, uh, he said he had to stay in bed all day. But then someone spotted him out at a bar drinking beer and smoking while he was still out sick on Tuesday. Well, he's all uh, over it on Tuesday, in all fairness. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they, uh, yeah, they, uh, they fired him for it. But then he sued for wrongful termination. Now, I, I mean, again, this is England, but I would think uh, there's no way he's wrongfully terminated. I mean, the guy lied, took a sick day. I mean, I think that's totally rightful termination. A judge said, no, he should not have been fired. Do you think he has like a lawyer friend who said, you know what? I think we have a case here. Because like, like you said, like if, if someone fired me for doing that, I'd be like, man, chalk it up to being an idiot. I got busted. I got what I deserved. I wouldn't even think of fighting that. I feel like you're right, Steve. I think a lawyer had to go through this because the lawyer uh, apparently found out the company's handbook does not specifically say that you can't go out and socialize in public if you've called in sick. And the judge was like, well... All right, that's true. There's nothing nothing in the company charters, handbooks, or anything that says that what he did actually is a fireable offense, you know, as far as company policy is concerned. I got to imagine the company's like, man, we didn't think we needed to put that in there. We figured that's just a given. Yeah. But now, like, that's just a, like, whenever we see stupid warning labels on, like, you know, certain things, like, warning, do not put this Tabasco sauce, do not squirt it in your eye. And you're like, well, why would they even put that on the warning label? And then you come to find out there was this incident where someone did that, didn't know, and then a lawsuit happened. That's got to be the reason. We've got a big company handbook. I wonder if there's something in there that says exactly that for that reason, Steve. Maybe, you know. Or what are those videos that we watched? I don't really pay attention to them. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. Those videos are more about, like, you know, like what to do when you're in the workplace and what to do when you're away from the workplace. But it doesn't have anything to do when you call in sick. I haven't seen any videos about that. The last one I remember is like sharing personal or company information while at the bar. Yeah. But yeah. does anybody else think it's like now that I actually kind of think about it, it's kind of a silly thing to have to prove to a company that you are sick just to take a day that you are allowed to take off off. Like, why do I have to tell you what exactly is wrong with me? Like, to you got to pretend that you sound sick. The whole coughing thing. And I mean, like, should we really like have to like that, that's I mean, we're adults. It's like, come on. I don't feel well. I don't feel like I like either mentally or whatever. I'm going to take a sick day. That's See, why that's we have the key. them. That's the key. If we can start saying mental health is a reason that we can take a sick day, then you're right, Vicky. At that point, it doesn't matter. And then what do you do for your mental health? Sometimes, Drink. you know what? Like, going to have a beverage mm-hmm. might do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a professional. I can't tell you what a person should do. Why are you at the bar? I'm curing my mental health. I mean, I'm going to use that excuse from now on, so thank you. 
With our company that doesn't care if you show up or not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually probably true. Of all the, by the way, this is like the most the, lax place. Like, they're so chill. Right? I know. Here's Danny, uh, because it's so hard for Danny to get time off. I mean, the company gives it him is, such a hard yeah. time for that. Right. You need to pretend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll go, you go ahead, Danny. Come up with all those excuses that you don't need. All right, so if, cool. it was, if it was wrongful termination, you said that this happened last March. That means he's going to get a payout. Yeah, he's got to go back to court to see how much money they're going to pay him for firing him. That is, uh, wow. That is uh, all because this guy decided to, you know, uh, go out and have a party uh, when he said he was sick. Oh, and how much he's going to get. Ooh, and, and how well, much will he spend at the bar? <laughs> I think wrongful termination would be, Steve, like his full year salary since it was last March. They're probably going to have to pay him all of his money. Of course, the, the, the lawyers are going to get a piece of that. But whatever he would have made between then and now. Well, I bet they fixed their handbook, too, at this point. You would yeah, think they, they probably have. something to it. Like, hey... You can't go get drunk on a sick day. Then if you, I don't know, throw some pain and suffering in there because you couldn't work, I don't know. I mean, this guy can make some cash. I All think for not doing nothing. You hear those stories of people posting like a picture of them on Facebook. Like, I'm at the bar. And then it's like somebody will comment, aren't you supposed to be at work? And then all of a sudden Whoops. you like realize that that post is gone. Yeah. And I'm sure their job is as well. <laughs> well, you know, now you, you, you know what? I think you got a lot of people. Who are probably, if any human resources people are listening to us, are probably going to go. Gosh, we're going to have to make an addendum to our to our handbook. Yeah, because I don't know if ours has anything. I mean, I, I can't say I've read it page to page, but <laughs> where do we find this handbook? Do they <laughs> do they give it to us? Yeah. Well, I was going to say I like how it's online handbook? now. If they I think did, it's, it's a long time ago. <laughs> I like how yeah. BJ's like I haven't read it page to page. I would have just stopped. I haven't read it. Yeah. <laughs> Period. I don't even oh, no, know I've, where I've, this I've handbook read is. I remember yeah. when like I first started working in radio. Back before, like, the internet took over everything digitally. So, like, you know, they still had stuff, like, pamphlets they gave you when you first got yeah. hired. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, an employee handbook. And that went right in the trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm going to read this yeah. and take this job to do homework. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it's online. I think if you go to whatever our main page is, I think there's the... Is anyone there's trying to find it? I want to know. I am trying to find it. And... It better be online. I mean, because I, I can't remember the last time that anybody gave us an employee handbook. But, you know, I mean, we... You know, I mean, we became a new company recently, so I feel like they should have given us a handbook to say, hey, new name, same handbook. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would imagine that, you know, that, that handbook isn't good anymore, right? Well, anyway, that's what I'm going to use when I call and sick and go to the bar. I don't know where you find the handbook. Like, they, they, uh, there's probably, nothing on our website that says, here's your handbook. Wow. I feel like it should be there. I mean, that's a big... Well, it should be. Well, now human resources is going to be pissed at us that we're on the radio. No, it's basically good. saying we don't have a handbook. If we don't, if we can't find the handbook, we could get away with anything. That's a good point. Big look, where is it in the handbook? It's true. I can't find it. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I, or, yeah, I can't. I don't even know if we have a handbook. It's been that long. I mean, I'm with the company for over 20 years. So uh, if they gave me a handbook 20 years ago, I got to be thinking they made some addendum since then and I should get a new one. Okay, then. Well, hey, guess what, guys? I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little sick. Who wants to go to the bar? Yes. In. Yeah. All right, let's do it. The handbook doesn't say otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't even have a handbook. <laughs> what are you talking about, Steve? <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not finding anything. I found one from 2019. All right, woo! Oh. Nice. My it says employee sure. handbook acknowledgement, so I don't even know if that's fully it. I think I just said you just clicked on something to acknowledge that you read the handbook. <laughs> yeah. But where is the handbook? The well, handbook's not there. You, you just yeah. clicked on the link and I don't see a handbook. <laughs> well, we're a bunch of liars, aren't we? So we said yes to that, whatever that was, to acknowledge we got it. Well, we can't be fired for not reading the handbook, so we have oh, to say... Oh, you say that, handbook. Danny. What if that's in the handbook saying you must read this or you're fired? But they didn't give it to us. <laughs> oh, well, they, you say they didn't give it to you, but what if they got, like, a picture of you taking it? Oh, well. Eh. Oh, no well. handbook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Well, Steve, oh, well. I'm so sorry you didn't get the book you wouldn't read. Yeah. Yeah, I feel badly for you. Just give me the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> yeah. Is it on uh, Wikipedia? He, yeah, that's a good question. Probably. Usually it just is like, don't be an idiot employee. Thank you. Oh, I found it. What? We have a handbook? Yeah. Where is it? Employee handbook. It's on our HR site. Ah. Why would it be on there? Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, why is it? That? Is that a human resources thing? Yeah. Did you click on it? Oh, no. Here we go. All right. So is it on the new page? It's like on the new company page? Yeah. All it's right. in your HR folder. So it's a good oh. job. Now the company's going to be sending out an email with the handbooks tomorrow, guys. Yeah, well, what are you going to do, huh? I yeah, but they got to they got to they got to fix them so that we can you know we can't get drunk at bars while we're sick. They're gonna have to fix that. I got Dexter said after the commercial break. I have a feeling that the team is gonna have a fresh new handbook in their hands. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's sixteen well, pages. That's I, it. I, I, That's it. Well, I think that 
See, I don't know. Because it's six pages or 16? 16. 16. 16. 16. Oh, that's a lot of pages to tell Steve he's fired. See, this is, okay, this is the... This is the time and attendance employee handbook. So apparently we have handbooks for different sections. Oh, wow. So a 16-page handbook on just attendance? Yeah, time and attendance. Wow. So that's, that's why I don't, I don't call in sick. And yeah, you need one page. Show pages. up. There's four and pages. And then here's page about, two. There's four and pages if, about requesting time off. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just how to look. Have you tried to use our program to figure that out? No. That's probably what you need. I mean, you know, honestly. You know, I, I miss the days when I could just go tell the boss, I'm not coming in. Right? That seemed to be an easy thing. Why do we need four pages of information to do this? Yeah. Right. Now you got to, oh, now you got to, I'm seriously, now you have to go to like basically uh, computer school to figure out how to get time off. Hey, I'll tell you these kids with their bloody programs and handbooks. I don't know if you guys saw this new survey. Don't know why you would have. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's in our handbook. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's right. Yeah. Found out that while many people are looking forward to riding in autonomous vehicles, uh, only 36% of us are actually eager to give full control when behind the wheel. We just don't trust it because there's just too many accidents. Dude, that is funny. We just had this conversation, my wife and I, uh, yesterday. We were you know, talking about what we're going to do with all the money that we make from AMC, which is <laughs> to the moon. Oh, yeah, you guys are, you it's guys going more to the earth at this moment, but Uh-oh. that's okay. You know, we're holding on for your life. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're holding. Yeah. Uh, holding. But we were just joking, like, you know, what's the dream car would you get? And I was like, oh, do, would you get a Tesla? And she's like, no. And I'm like, well, why not? And she's like, I think, because like, she loves the Teslas and think they look really cool. But she's like, I like to, like, let them be out on the market for a while to kind of work through all these kinks. Like, there, there's still, like, that nervousness of, like, you know, the, the, the stories of them going on fire. And now you've heard some stories of, like, the autonomous driving stuff. I'm like, I would get a Tesla in a heartbeat. Just so I don't have to like really pay attention while driving. I know that's not really what they want us to do, but that's oh yeah, yeah the, the, you know what? That's why I don't trust it because there are guys like you and me who wouldn't pay attention right. even when you're supposed to. I mean, until we get the Tom Cruise Minority Report cars that they had in that movie, where the cars just did it all on their own. But and, would you and, when and they, let's safe. say they come to a point where they say we figured it out? You can now ride these cars and actually not pay attention on the road. They are 100% or as close to 100% safe. Would you, would you get one of them? I think I would try because I'm getting older and at some point someone's going to tell me to stop driving. Mm. But I still want to get around. And, uh, you know, that's a good who, point. Yeah. I mean, that's, the, that's uh, you know, I, I don't have enough. I, like, I can't get Morgan Freeman. Was he the guy that drove Miss Daisy? I, I, I forget who it was. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't get more. If I can't get Morgan Freeman to drive me around, then I'm going to have to get an autonomous car. I would do it as long as everyone else had to do it as well. Yes. So because, all the cars on the road are autonomous. Yes. Because I would, oh. I don't trust people. That's my problem. Right. I'll, I'll trust the car 100%. But if other people are still driving normally, they're going to hit my car. There's a lot of stupid people on the roads. I yes. don't know if you know this. Yes. I you am one of ourselves included. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all What's, guilty of it. What's really interesting is, is that, like I told you, only 36% of people are ready for to like let the car drive it all itself. Yeah, but when it comes to public transit, uh, more than half of the people are like, yeah, I have no problem if a train is run by computer, bus, taxi, or plane. If it's autonomous, I don't care. I've been in Which, some taxis where I honestly think a robot would have been a safer choice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Johnny Cab. I want Johnny Cab from Johnny Total Recall. Cab. Well, planes, oh, yeah. don't they do autopilot? Haven't they been doing autopilot forever? Yep. Just not on uh, takeoff and uh, landing. 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 Yeah, yeah, it only maintains speed and altitude. Huh. Yeah, maybe I'll be a little worried about that. If, if it happens, don't tell me about it. It's yeah. like one of those things where after I land, just be like, oh, and by the way, there was no captain in the cockpit. I think that's probably why people are okay with it, because you don't really see the captain anyway, so yep. it's just kind of like the feeling of, oh, well, if I don't know. I probably feel that way about a train as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and when you think about it, when you're on a subway uh, or, or light rail... Uh, you know, depending on what car you're on, you'd never see the driver. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's in this, oh, yeah, I think those are the trains, like, there's no driver in the trains at SeaTac. And I, I get on those all the time. And right. I don't, I think those are completely computerized. They're like a roller coaster. Yeah. They hit a button and it goes. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I mean, at that point, it's the same deal. I mean, and, and I never question it. I get on those trains and never question it at SeaTac. So why not? I'm ready for it. I would love an autonomous car just for the simple reason that then I can just close my eyes and take a nap. Yes. Especially right now, like, I don't remember what naps were like ever since we had our child. And I used to, like, live and die by those. Like, that was like, that would get me through the rest of the day. Well, now without them, it's just like, by 7 o'clock, I'm really struggling. It would be so awesome to be like, finish work, get in the car and just close my eyes and then, boom, home. 
See, that's why I'm so stoked for light rail. Because when I yeah. was in, in Boston, you could take a nap. It was, mm-hmm. or, or you could watch a thing. You could read, you know, whatever you want to do. I am so ready to not have to worry about driving. See, I would love to be driven around by light rail or whatever. The scary thing for me with light rail, because I've, I've taken light rail to the airport a lot of times, and I'm just so scared that I'm going to fall asleep and then not wake up at the stop. Whereas, like, if you have a car, you can mm-hmm. program it, and it'll just, like, beep really loud when it's time for you to wake up. Dude, and I was growing up in New York, and it wasn't just one person. This would happen a lot, like, especially in high school, but also it would happen just on, like, the subways, like, because everyone's taking public transportation. There would be people that have notes that say, hey, can you nudge me and wake me up if we hit oh, yeah. uh, 42nd Street exit? That's how we really? did it, Kenny. That'd yeah. be mean. That'd be mean. <laughs> I've fallen asleep on the subway once, and I ended up in a not-so-desirable part of Brooklyn, and I was just like... I felt like I was in like some weird like Escape from Brooklyn movie. <laughs> I was just like, "What the hell?" I got, and then wait for another one. I was completely confused. There was no cell phone or internet, so I didn't know how to get home. I was just like, "I'm oh, just going to yeah. try and get on the train that goes the other direction." Yeah, that was terror. Yeah, that was always terrifying if you're subway. Because same thing with Boston. If yeah. it took you to the part of town that was a rough part of town, you're like, "Oh dang, that, that sucks." Not falling asleep ever again. I'm going to just stand on the subway. I don't care <laughs> if it's a two hour trip. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. What are the names of the three Rice Krispies mascots? Snap, Crackle, and Donatello. No. Pop. Yes. Snap, Crackle, Pop. <laughs> Donatello. <laughs> nice. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Pete Migs at 847. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I can't afford to pay my bills, how am I going to afford attorneys and bankruptcy fees? You know, one of the things people ask me all the time as a bankruptcy lawyer is that how am I going to pay all these fees and costs because I'm here because I can't afford to pay my bills. And I, of course, we understand that. I mean, being in, being in, in the bankruptcy field. Uh, but, you know, one of the things to remember is, is that if you decide, once you make the decision to file bankruptcy, you can stop paying on all of the creditors that are going to be included in the bankruptcy. And those are the funds that you can use that you have been paying your creditors to pay your, your attorney fees and court costs to get your case filed. And once your case is filed, you're not going to have most of those payments anymore. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.